They were holding that half base on the top, 22. That's right. <clears throat> okay. I think Hashem that we're able to learn every day. We're supposed to be learning. We should have the base of English immediately. Okay, it starts with Tashima, come in here. Come and listen. Bring the proof to the Gemara's to, to to resolve the Gemara's question. Uh, does a husband uproot the vow when he announces his wife's vow? Does he uproot it from the uh, the way it is originally, like retroactive, or does he just cancel it from then and on? <clears throat> what I what um, I understood from preparing today's Gemara is that it's really each question is divided into two. If you say there's two there's two uh, basic options, either the husband retroactively takes it out, just like a Chacham does when you mm -hmm. annul a vow with the Chacham, he retroactively takes it off. Now, the Chacham has to search for a, a Pesach, for a, an opening of what regret the person had. And then it turns out that there was really a, a, a toss, a mistake. And you never would have made the, this nether had you had known that this would be the situation. By the husband, you don't have to do that. You don't have to search for that, but but uh, there is a possibility that it still goes back and, and removes it ret retroactively. That's a, a possibility that's in the Gemara's question. Now, just one second, let me like go through this po possibility. So now, the difference between if it's ret retroactive or if it cancels it from then and on, that difference is if someone else says that I wanna be like you, Woman says Harini Nasser, another woman says Vani, and then the first woman's husband goes and, and uh, annuls the vow. <clears throat> Do we say that the husband annuls the vow retroactive, and then it goes back and, and she was never really a <coughs> Nazira? Then the second person that said, I want to be like you, was also not a Nazira because it was ret retroactive. Or do we say that it was, only cancels it from then and on? And so therefore she's still a Nazar because she was attached, she attached herself to, 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 to this woman that was a Nazar at that time. It wasn't that she was never a Nazar, she was a Nazar at that time. The truth is that even if we say that it's retroactive, there still is a possibility that when she says, I wanna be a Nazar, that there was, at that time, there was still some sort of Naziris there. Later on, you took it up. And later on, it, we, retroactively, it goes up. But when this woman said that I want to be like you, Rani, so it could be that, uh, that, that uh, she's still accepting the Naziris. Even though later on, it's going to go off, but right now, she accepted it. That's, that's like in that, there's another possibility. At least there's a thought like that, but the Gemara is like analyzing. And then if you go the other way, Moni, if you go the other way, if you say that the Naziris is canceled, the husband doesn't retroactively take remove it. It's just canceled from then and on. Then there's also a possibility that when the second woman said that Vani or I want to be like you, so it could be that she's saying, I want to be like the way you actually, how it pans out. And even though I want to be like you, or I, I'm also, but really what I meant was only if your Naziris is going to last, do I want to be a Nazir? So that original Shaila of, do I say it's retroactive or do I say that it's canceled is much more complex than that. I mean, that's like very, very general, but in the subtleties of this Kamara, it's, it's, uh, each one of those has, a, has another option in it. You follow? Okay. So first case here. Yeah. Right. Right. So wouldn't that cause a difference of going forward? 100%. 100%. That's part of the logic. When it comes to the husband, so because there's regret, so it's as if it was never there, so it's retroactive. 
because of the chacham, he has to look for regret. So therefore, it's retroactive. But by the husband, where there's no regret, doesn't have to do with regret. So it's only canceled from then and on. That's that's part of the logic in that. And even if it, even if it does go back, but it's still not that it was never made. It was it takes it off retroactive, but it's not because of regret, which was like a whole mistake. Okay, let's take a look. Tashma, Isha Shenadra ben Nasser, a woman that took a vow that she's going to be a Nazir, a Nazira. And then she became impure. We're on top of 22A. Right. Not on becoming Right. Right. So she says it now. The next thing is she is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. We did have cases before where they would say, I'll be announcer in 20 days or something. <coughs> But in general, these things sound more impulsive. So, is that the view of Nazir? It's an impulsive act. In general, I think I, in general, the Dara, the Gemara views that it's impulsive. I guess it must be. So then, so if you had had time to think about it, thought right. about the consequences, right? That was that surprising thing back in the Dara, where they were trying to annul the Nether, and the rabbi was telling him, did you think about this case? And he says, yeah. Did you think about it until he got so upset that, he, what do you mean you did this and it wasn't even impulsive? <laughs> so, Vinitmis, then she became tummy. There's a problem for another. She's not supposed to become tummy. And then the husband goes in and annuls it. So the rule was, she has to bring a chata saif, but she doesn't bring an ayla saif. Now, when we learned this, we quoted this before, yesterday or the day before, we explained that there are examples where a chata sa'if, a sin offering, a bird sin offering can be brought even that when it's not definite that it's required. So there's certain leniencies here. See, you can't bring a sacrifice in the temple that's not required. It's full in bazara. If it's not required, you can't bring that. If it's, you can bring a donation offering. An adava. But you can't bring any of these obligatory offerings that are necessary. So a chatas is an obligatory offering. And an ayla would be, you could bring an ayla for other things, but not, I'm not sure if you can bring an ayla saif. You would bring, anyway, whatever the case is, over here you bring um, only the chatas. And because of that special leniency that a chatas has, that you can bring it even when it's not 100% sure that you need to. So the is al bal megas guy is, and if it will enter your mind to say that the husband only cancels it from then and on, but he doesn't retroactively cancel it, why doesn't she have to bring the rest of the karbanas? She became tummy. There's different ways of looking at this. What do the karbanas do? Do the are the karbanas there for the impurity that came on her, or are the kabbanas there for her to be able to restart the new nazirs? Well, to restart the new nazirs, she doesn't have to. But the impurity that came on her, she had. So maybe, what are the kabbanas for? Is it because she was a nazir that became impure? Is it for the past or for, is it for the future? So apparently, the fact that she brings a chattas, that, the, the, uh, that she brings a chattas, that it's for the past. So if she's bringing it for the past, so then she should also bring the Ayla Saif. No. When you restart, in other words, as someone that's a Nazar that becomes Tame has to bring Karbanas. And then they restart the count. So are those Karbanas part of the impurity that they had in the past? Or are those Karbanas part of the restart? This woman does not need to restart because her husband annulled it. She canceled it. Yeah. But she does have the past. If you say Baal Megas Gaius that the husband cancels, does have to rectify what took place. So if you say, if that's the case, then she brings the Chata Saif, then why doesn't she have to bring the Ayla Saif? I would expect the Gemara to answer 
that the Chata Saif is for the past and the Ayla Saif is for the future. So maybe that's what it means. But Mai, so what are we going to say? Mea Karakar. We have to say that the reason why she doesn't bring the Ayla Saif is because mm-hmm. the husband retroactively can't, uh, removes the whole vow. Mm-hmm. Then if that's the case, so Chata Saif Namilei Tesis, why does you have to bring the Chatas? We're sort of like caught over here. Tesis adds in that when the Gemara asked, that she should bring the Ayla Saif, she should also bring, she'll, she, she, the is also asking that she should bring the Asham, which is the animal Asham. Okay. The Gemara says, okay, here I didn't know where to put the uh, question mark. Does it go before the Hachinami or does it go after the Hachinami? I think it goes before the Hachinami. And then the Gemara answers, Hachinami, Vahamani, Rebbe Lazar Kapri. Let me take a look at your, uh, your Gemara. Yeah. Where do they put it? They, well, they use an exclamation mark, but it's Hachinami. The Gemara answers, so too, she should not have to bring the bird offering either. But so too, in other words, Hachinami, so too. Hacha means here, and Hachi means so. So or this. And Nami means also or too. Hachinami, so too. Um, uh, you're right that you really shouldn't have to bring the Chata Saif either. However, Vamani Kapri, this is Rabblazar Kapri, which we mentioned uh, in passing before. We had a few times, I think. The Tanya, start in Abraisa. Rabblazar Kapri, Baribi, last time we said. Uh, the great. What are they, what are they translated over there? They're esteemed. Rabblazar Kapri, they're esteemed. What is the meaning of the Pasuk Meshachat Al Nefesh? Um, because he sinned on the soul, what did he sin? What happened is that he took a vow that he wasn't going to drink wine, and that's we're going to consider a sin. And that's called a sinner. And the matter is a, a fortiori, right? It's a, uh, it's a if someone just refrains from drinking wine, he's considered a sinner. Someone that takes a vow from, from everything is for sure considered a sinner. That means if he takes a, um, a fast, he accepts on himself a fast. It's for sure it's considered a sin. He's not supposed to be, um, be uh, tormenting himself. Okay. We have this on your test. We have this in the Durham as well. It wasn't in Tynus? Yeah, actually, it wasn't Tynus as well. Very good. Very <laughs> good. We'll see you need the trophy. Oh. We'll put this out. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tashima. What are all the settings? Super settings. Yeah. You know the Rapilal uh, Rapil Parich, Rapil Parich. He was a student of. He wanted to be a student of Alter Rebbe, but he never really met Alter Rebbe. He ended up he was a student of Mitzvah Rebbe and the Tzimach Tzedek. At the Tzimach Tzedek, he was considered half a Rebbe, but um, he had a lot of chumras. One of them was like he wouldn't take his yarmulke off, and he went to the mikveh, he would dip under the water with his yarmulke on, and it would float. And then he would come back up. It's very uh, like a very strict. Uh, anyway, one time he couldn't find the thing. He was like, looking for the arm. He was going to stay under there. So, um, so uh, they asked him, "Why are you so strict? What is this all about?" He says, "I want to be able to understand Chassidus better." Mm-hmm. It's like he was trying to refine himself to be able to understand the Torah more. You know. For, it's not, we don't do it, we don't, there's like reasons why someone would do this, but it has, it can't be just, uh, you know, because mm-hmm. ascetic, you know. Have you read it? It's the Telech Bible. He has a, a commentary on Kuntras' uh, Bible. There's a book on that. Yeah, that's the commentary on Kuntras' Bible. I've looked at the consciousness of spy list, but I didn't. Uh, yeah. People say it's wonderful. I've never looked at it. Where it has. Yeah. 
Which yeah, a few years ago, there was like this movement. There was this movement to study uh, the consciousness by less. And what I don't know what happened, but I don't, I don't hear it. It was like, uh, like you know, bad. Okay. I call Tali the muscle, right? Everything is up to uh, luck. You know, even which Torah they take out of the ark. Okay. So, Tashima, another uh, proof for this. The Tani was taught in a Brisa. The Tani Behedya, taught clearly in a Brisa, in a Tesefta. A woman that took on herself that she's going to be a Nazar, Vishama Chaver Tavam Ravani. Her friend hears what she's doing and she says that I as well. The husband of the first woman that accepted on herself to be a Nazar comes along and annuls it. So he, Muteras, the first woman is permissible. The Chaverta Asura. And the friend uh, becomes, uh, because the friend, st- it still remains. Mm. This is very clear. No, this is, uh, uh, was exactly our question. Exactly what we were asking. Uh, obviously, Shmamina Baal Megas Gaius. You have to say that the husband, that the husband, no dominoes, right? The husband only cancels it from then and on, or else the woman wouldn't have been, uh, the second woman wouldn't have been a, a Nazira. Rav Shimon Aimer, Rav Shimon says, Im Amra La Hareni Kamaisech. If the woman says that I want to be like you, stay in Mutaris, then they're both going to be permissible. Now, what Rib Shimon is saying, what apparently, is that even if the husband is saying, even if the husband only cancels it from then and on, but now, in which that would mean that the woman that says I'm, first woman says I'm an Asa, second woman says I want to be like you. Right. The husband comes on, cancels the first woman. So the first, so the second woman, her, her Nazir should be standing. But if she uses the expression that I want to be like you, then what she really means is that I, want, um, I only want to be like you. I want to be like how you turn out. I don't want to be any more than you. I want to be li- like you. And since you don't, in the end, it didn't work. So then I really never accepted it either. This throws us off from that. This is what we're saying. that Even Mega's guy is, isn't always 100%. So Shtay and Mataris, both of them would be permissible. Okay. And this, according to Reb Shimon, he asking Reb Shimon or before Reb Shimon? Before Reb Shimon, it says that the woman is prohibited. According to the sages, the woman is prohibited. And that's not the dominoes. That's, uh, it's, it's um, totally, it's, the husband just cancels it from then and on. That was the first one. The one not so like one. Right. You get to go. The um, second one, let's say there's Rachel and Leia. Rachel says, I'm going to be a Nazir. Leia says, me too. So, and then Rachel, it gets canceled. So Leia would still be a Nazir, according to this, according to that. Now, according to Reb Shimon, depends what expression she is. If she says, then she won't be a Nazir. Yeah, they're linked linked together. It's only if yours pans out that I I want to be a Nazir as well. Now, Marzucha Breder of Mari Omar, hi, hi, no, Dirami Barchama. If you're going to follow this through, then with this, we could be able to answer a question that Rami Barchama had. And the way Taisvis puts this, this is a huge Taisvis. The first part of Taisvis, the way Taisvis puts this, is that what he's about to say is that you really don't have a proof for Baal Megas Gaius that the husband cancels it. I can really use, say, based on the question of Rami Barhama, that Baal Meyakaraka, that the husband actually removes it from the beginning. So how does this woman remain in Nazira? You'll see Rami Barhama's question, possible that she remains in Nazira, even though the husband retroactively removes it. The boy Rami Barhama, because Rami Barhama had a question. It says, Harelai Kabasar Zevach Shlamim Mahu. See, there's um, 
um, slight uh, uh, difference when it comes to a shlamim before the blood is sprinkled and after the blood is sprinkled. Before the blood is sprinkled, so then no, you're not allowed to eat from this animal. It's a carbon that you have to wait for the blood. Right? That's the, uh, the sin of the sons of Eli. They, they, the they took it too, altar, too quick. The they sprinkled it on the altar, right? So um, someone says, and, but one second after it's sprinkled, then it's permissible to eat. Anyone can eat it. You just have to stay in, uh, in Yerushalayim and you have to be pure. So if someone says that this loaf of bread should be like this meat of the peace offering, so what does he mean? Does he mean the peace offering before the blood is sprinkled? Does he mean the peace offering after the blood is sprinkled? Yeah, but if he's saying that this is a vow, so he probably means before. Because afterwards, there's no vow there. Everyone can eat from it. And what he said was meaningless. If he's saying something, he probably means something significant, which would mean before it. So Rami Bracham has this question. He has um, probably some other meat in front of him. And he says that this should be like this. What he meant to say when he's grasping it, does he mean to say as it was originally, when it was prohibited? And therefore, this bread is now prohibited. I Dilma I think the word tsunami means that it cooled down. Or maybe, is that how they translate it there? Or maybe what he means is after it's been cooled in its permitted state. Bitsanana, whatever, go over there with that. The term tsunami means cold. Just a hot item turns cold. Prohibition has cooled and become permitted. Okay. Um, tainan means cold, right? Cham, 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 and tainan. Okay, so I don't know what what is that? What it has to do with the radish? Tainan is a radish. What is it? Is that, is that like something cold? It's actually really sharp, right? Anyway, so or does the person mean when it's after the prohibition has cooled, and that's when? That's what he means, and he's really not saying anything. So <clears throat> what we're saying now is that it's possible that when this person, according to the, um, to the first shot in Taisvis, it's possible that really when this, this Leia, who remains in his era, it could be that really the husband ret retroactively removes Rachel's vow. But because Leia said that I want to be uh, like you, I'm, I'm as well, and I'll be another as well. She means that I'll be like you when you were prohibited. Going back to the time when it was, and it could be that Palmea Karaka that, she, that it retroactively takes it off. But nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, at that time when she was prohibited, right? Because until it was retroactively taken off, she was prohibited. Nevertheless, it should still be considered a, uh, a vow that she's in this era. Kumara says, me dummy, how can you compare this? Awesome, kivan damahariya like besides ever shlamim. Over there, uh, the person says that this loaf of bread should be like the meat of a peace offering. Over there, it's still, even though the blood is sprinkled, but it, it's still considered consecrated. But if you're going to say that the vow is taken after it's cooled down, then it's totally removed. What the Gemara is saying is that by the by the uh, by the carbon by the, the peace offering, there still is some residual holiness that remains. So when the person says that I want it to be, I want this loaf of bread to be like this, this is actually still holy. It's not prohib prohibited holy, but it's still holy. And it's referring to the time when it was prohibited. But when the person says that I want to, I'm going to be a Nazar, then the, the second wo woman says, I'm, I'm, me too. And then the husband removes the first one. So there is nothing left of the first one. There's no residual Naziris. So therefore, how could you say that this is a comparison 
that the second woman should be a Nazar because this woman was a Nazar at an earlier state, there's nothing left of that. If it's retroactive. That's the way Tysus lines it at the beginning. He then rejects this. He has some interesting questions on this. Um, first of all, how could the Gemara make this comparison? First, the, uh, the, by the carbon, no one says that it goes back and retroactively makes everything per permitted. When we come up with that, this comparison is, not, is so not uh, accurate. By the husband, we're saying that maybe it's retroactive and there was never a vow there at all. But by the carbon, it just becomes per per permitted from then and on. Also, this contradicts everything that we would have learned because we said that we had a Mishnah that says that if one person takes a vow and the next person says an I as well, and then the person after that says an I as well, we said that if the first one uh, annuls the vow, that ones after him, it goes off. According to this, the ones after him don't go off. It would contradict everything. Anyway, this has some other ways of learning this. And... Okay. Ikeda Amri, some say, that this actually would, would answer Rami Barchama's question. Okay. And we would say, and how would we say, how would we answer it? How does he conclude? It would be actually the question of Rami Barhama. Um, some say that this last refutation is not accepted. In their opinion, the dilemma concerning two women who vowed is certainly similar to Rami Barham. Okay. Okay. Next case. Amala Harini Nazar Bi Ikvayach. Wait, is that it? That's it. It just leaves it like that. Yeah. Sort of like you like you shall me over here, where it leaves questions unanswered. You know. So I was writing this. Tysus over here is writing this very interesting thing. It says um Long Tasteless says, that Lush and Nazir is different than everywhere else. Did I see this? But yeah, Velush and Nazir Mishunahu. The language of Nazir is different than other places. Anyway, okay. Take is already a statement that, that we don't know the answer. It could be that we've resolved it along the way somewhere. And, you know, it looked like we had a Shema Minov before that the husband only cancels it from then and on. That's what it looked like. Okay. Let's say the woman says, Harini Nazir be Ikvayach. I'm going to be an, uh, a Nazir, a Nazira. After you, how do they translate big fire? In your footsteps. Well, Mahu, what's the din? What does this mean? Harini be kvayach be kula melsevisharya doesn't mean that I'm going to follow you entirely. You see, what happened now is that the husband comes in and annuls the vow. So it doesn't mean that I'm going to be a nuzer how it pans out by you. Which means that I'm gonna be it's gonna be permissible. Or maybe in your footsteps means before the husband annuls it, and then she's gonna be Vasira, she's gonna be prohibited. Oh. One of the commentaries here said that it, it, the term actually could have two, two meanings. 
Did I see this? Do you have a note on this? On the, on the word of Kaya? Take a look. Yeah, Taisa says that the expression can be explained in two ways. On the one hand, it can mean your footsteps following, which indicates that her vow will be similar to that of the first woman. On the other hand, it can also mean due to you, which would indicate a full acceptance of Nazarite ship. Because, because, right. So it doesn't mean after you, which means that I'm only going to be a Nazar as it pans out by you, or it doesn't mean because of you, and then I'm going to be a, remain a Nazar. So it's really a question on the Hebrew language. Um, Tashima, so come and listen. It's funny, we're going to bring a proof from an example where the husband doesn't even say this. He uses a different expression. Isha Shinajar bin Nazar, which comes to tell me that it's not really a question about the language because he, the husband, the proof that we're going to use here is not has doesn't he doesn't use the same word, but just looking to translate the word, then this would be a, not a not a good example. A woman says that she's going to be a nazar. Vishama Baila, the husband hears. Va'amar Vani, he says that I'll also be a nazar. Any achalafri can anala. We discussed this before, that we had two possibilities. Is it because he can't annul it because if he annuls it, then he's going to end up annulling his own vow, and we have a rule that he can't annul his own vow. We had another possibility, is that um, really he wouldn't be annulling his own vow anyway. He could really annul her vow. His vow would still remain because Mega's guy is because he only cuts it off from the future. The reason why he couldn't uh, um, annul the vow was because when he says Vani, he's establishing the vow. That's a way of saying that I like what you're doing. When he says, I'll do it as well. So the Gemara right here doesn't know that answer. Um, he learned it before, but the Gemara here is, is like in an earlier stage. And if would say, if you would say that means that it's going back to the original vow. Then let it um, he is establishing, he could annul her, her vow and establish his vow. Because uh, Vani, let's say he said you know, when I, he didn't, he said Vani. But the Gemara is assuming that when the husband <laughs> says Vani, that's similar to Bek Baya. Uh, the explanation for this, how, how we can do this comparison where it's so not similar, is because Bek means how it pans out later. Now, that's what someone else would say. But because the husband, it's up to the husband to figure, to, to determine that, how it's going to pan out, because he's in full control. He's in the driver's seat here. So therefore, when he says Vani, that's exact, exactly like someone else said be quiet because he's the one that actually does that annulment. So if someone um, says be quiet, if it would mean that it's only that it's that not how it pans out, but as it is because of you, as it is right now, so then he should be able to annul his wife's vow and he'll still be, uh, he'll still, he was not annulling his vow. It must mean that. When he says Vani, why can't he annul it? Because it would be annulling his vow. Because Be'ekvayach means that how it pans out at the end. So when someone says, I'm going to be a Nazar in your footsteps, that would mean if it pans out that you remain a Nazar, then I would also be a Nazar. And if not, then if it goes off by you, then it's off by me. And that's why he can't annul it, because Layachal Dvari is not allowed to annul his own, his own vow. Kumara says that's not a good. Uh, no, and, the, and therefore, the first, the first Gemara concludes, and therefore, if a woman would say, then she would be permissible. The Gemara says, lie. It's, not a good, uh, um, it's not a good proof, because we could say that um, it's not a good 
that the vow, the person takes the vow, he's not referring to how it pans out. He's referring to how it is right now. And so why can't a husband not annul that? You said the problem was that it would be annulling his own vow. No, no, no. It's because it's as if he's saying that, that I'm establishing your vow. Now, her vow, he can't annul because he just established it. And his vow, he can't annul because he can never annul his vow unless he goes to a chacham. The only thing he can do is if he wants to go and ask to annul his establishing of the vow that he's able to do. And if he doesn't do that, then he can't. Okay, there's another piece of Gemara here before the Mishnah. It says, Harini Nazar Ba'at Ba'amra Amin, Mefer Shalah Vishalai Kayim. If he tells his wife, I'm going to be a Nazar, and what about you? And she says, Yes. She says, Amin. Then he's able to annul her vow, but his, his own vow he can't annul. For a minute, there's a contradiction to this. Yeah. Yeah, she accepted it. It sounds like he is establishing, right? Let's take a look. Right. So. Proposing something to you, then I don't want you to do this. Right. I was hoping you would say no. So Viramino, there's a contradiction because there's another Brisa that says differently than the Mishnah. It says, Harini Nazir Va'at. I'll be a Nazir. And, and what about you? Bamra Amen. And she says yes. So Shnei Masurim. First of all, if she says yes, both of them are Nazirim. They am love. And if she doesn't say yes, Shnei Mutarim, then they're both permissible. That's totally not what our Mishnah said. If they should tell a Nidra bin Nidra, because he was making his vow dependent on if she says yes. Do you agree to this? Let's get into this together. And our Mishnah didn't say that. So I'm Rav Yehuda. Rav Yehuda says, Tani mefer shalavish kayim. What you have to add into the brisa is that he can annul her vow and his vow still standing. You have to add that phrase in. Brisa doesn't say that. But the Mishnah said that. And that's what it would be. He would still be allowed to annul her vow. Okay. Says, you don't have to add that into the Brysa. Because probably. Brysa, the Brysa is referring to going to the Kamala Harini Nasser. The Brysa is talking about that he's adding in a Tnai. There's the Imat, there's a, a gear that's supposed to see. I'll become a Nasser if you also become a Nasser. That's why when she says yes, they both become an, a Nazar. And if she says no, then they both don't become a Nazar. And probably over there, he can't annul it because it was totally up there. When he becomes a Nazar, he's accepting her Naziris. Masnisen, but our Mishnah, Nazar, the Mishnah was referring to where he says, I'll be a Nazar, but Atmai, and what about you? Am I in this alone or are you joining? And therefore, Misham Hachi, and therefore, because she says yes, He's able to still annul her vow, even though he uh, proposed it. Yeah. All of these complications could be significant because if the husband says, I don't like it, I don't want to it. He's made these problems for himself. Right. Seems like she can always go to a coffin and say, I didn't see or see that my husband wouldn't want it. And that would be a Pesach. Right. And now the right. talk Hawkham can annul it with my Freya and it right. frees them both. Right. So it seems right. like this is a all of this complication. Right. All of this could be could be resolved with a Chacham. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's leave it over here. Wow.